is Alex from Alex's Innovations and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to score an 800 on the physics SAT subject test without taking any of the AP physics. So as you may know, there are multiple AP physics courses offered by the College Board and each of them discuss different things. Our school actually doesn't offer AP physics at all and they offer IB physics in the senior year. And even if I were to take IB physics in the senior year, I still would not learn enough to be able to take the SAT subject test in time for applying to colleges, which means that I have to study for the SAT physics test only on the basis of my honors physics education. I live in New York State, and if any of you guys are not familiar with how New York State does standardized tests, there are these tests called Regences. They're really not that hard, but it allows schools to teach material at a level that is not college material, but it's sort of a basic learning level. So New York State offers this in the four sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, and earth science, which isn't a real science, but our school offers it anyway. <laughs> and so I had to take the physics regions. I took honors physics last year as a junior, but honors physics, as I soon found out, was not enough to prepare me for this test. So just a general timeline of things, I applied to colleges in November and December of my senior year, and I finished my honors physics course in June of my junior year, which meant that in between June and November or December, I had to take the subject test. I decided to take my subject test at the end of August, I think it was August 24th or 25th, this was really nice because I was not going away for the summer other than about a week with my family. So I could have pretty much the whole summer to study. Also something really convenient is where I work, I work as an usher at a local performing arts theater. We're only working before and after the show, but during the show it's all yours. So anyway, let's get into it. Step one, determine whether or not you're actually going to take the test. This seems kind of counterintuitive because you're watching this video, but I'm going to say this because I was unsure whether or not I was going to take the physics test. I was not sure where I was going to be applying to college, and all of my top colleges strongly recommended that you do well on the SAT physics test, and so I didn't want to give any of my top colleges reason to deny me. So I realized that this should probably be the best decision for me. The only reason why I was skeptical is because it is much harder to do well on the physics SAT subject test than it is to do on the regular SAT, or a physics test that you're adequately prepared for, like people who have taken AP Physics. Step two is once you determine that you're going to be taking the test, you have to commit. You register as early as you can. Don't be afraid of the exam fees. It costs less than the actual SAT, and they do offer fee waivers if your family qualifies for it. So you have to commit, because committing means that you are willing to put in the work and the effort and study. If you don't commit in your head, you'll think, yeah, I'm going to be taking the physics test, but you won't really feel motivated because you can think I can back out at any time. So committing really helps you to solidify that. That gives you a much more determined outlook on your study plan. Step three, purchase a review book. After spending many hours on Reddit, because that's the most reliable source for information, I decided to purchase the Barron's SAT subject test for physics book. I chose this book partly because some of its practice tests are much harder than the actual test, so I figured that if I can do moderately well, moderately well meaning scoring 700s, low 700s on these tests, I could easily get an 800. And so I bought this book, and I really like this book because what it does is it gives you a practice test in the beginning where it asks you to take a test, which I'll come back to. You can score your weaknesses and strengths, and then it has a chapter on each major topic. It has about maybe 10 pages um, explaining to you what you need to know, and it's sort of a nice review if you've already learned it. And then at the end of each section, there are practice questions specifically relating to that chapter. And then at the end of the book, it comes with three more practice tests that you can use, and they are much harder than the actual test. But that's good preparation. Some of you guys will be phased by this, but I assume if you're watching this video, you want to score an 800, and that means that you are aiming for the top. So you want to do as much as you can to score that 800, and I strongly recommend taking those practice tests. So step four, as I mentioned, take the practice test in the beginning of the book. This is before you start studying. I did this about two months before I started, so this would be at the end of June. <laughs> and right after finals, the last thing you want to do is study more, but if you want to score that 800, you're going to want to do that. So taking the practice test two months before you start studying sort of gives you a baseline for how prepared you are for this test. This is before studying. This is just what you've learned from your honors physics course. Take the test under real conditions, so don't give yourself a calculator. Make sure you time yourself for an hour, and you will have to do 75 multiple choice questions. At the end of the test, you want to make a tally for each of the chapters, and then tally off how many questions you got wrong from each chapter. You're going to be reluctant to study the things that you're not so good at, because you'll get discouraged quickly. So what I suggest is step five. Study what you learned, but you forgot. 
This will help you to jog your memory and sort of get you into that physics mindset and you'll also be a lot less discouraged when you don't know the material because it'll be much much easier for you to learn it. And for this I recommend going in the Barron's book and highlighting, actively reading. I'm pretty fast at reading but if you read one of those sections in less than half an hour or 45 minutes you're doing it wrong. You're not going to remember that information unless you're some sort of genius speed reader or something but you want to actively read. You want to ask yourself after every paragraph what did I learn? What is this passage telling me? You want to actively highlight it? I'm just going to show you an example here. So in this example, the passage is showing how to graph variables. And so instead of reading all that, later when I'm flipping through my review book, I can just read the one sentence. And then I drew myself a little diagram, Y versus X. And then that little thing. That's just a, an example of what you can do to summarize the text in your own words. Once you are done actively reading a chapter and you think you've understood it, at the end of each chapter there are about 10 practice questions and I strongly recommend you take these and really, really think about it. Go back to the chapter if you need to, if you need to reinforce your memory, but don't look at the answers, you're going to want to. So once you're done, you've completed it to the best of your ability, look at the questions that you got right and why you got them right, and then look at the questions that you got wrong and why you got them wrong. This is super important. When you're done with that, write down how many you got right as well as the date at the beginning of that chapter. That way when you're flipping through later, you can see how many you got right and then you can know that if you got a 6 out of 10, you might want to review that. But if you got a 10 out of 10, then you shouldn't use the little time you have left reviewing to study that. Once you've done all of the chapters that you already learned but that just forgot, then is the fun part. This is teaching yourself the stuff that you don't know. This to me seemed really, really frustrating, and it will definitely seem frustrating to you. To teach yourself things, first I'd recommend going on Khan Academy and looking at videos from the AP Physics courses that they offer there. The AP Physics and the SAT Physics sort of overlap uh, because they're both manufactured by College Board. So there are similar topics, but Sal Khan is amazing. <laughs> and also the other videos they have there that he didn't narrate, but it's amazing because he walks you through specifically each of the processes. Some of you might be visual learners. I personally am. I have to watch a video in order to do that. So hopefully this video is helping you so far. But anyway, do the questions that they have on Khan Academy that pertain to each video. So that will help you get a really basic understanding. Once you have done all of the topics on Khan Academy that pertain to that specific topic, then you're going to read through the chapter just like you did with the other chapters that you already knew the material on but you were just reviewing. So you're going to actively read, you're going to highlight, then write in the margins, briefly summarize each paragraph and that will give you an idea of what that paragraph is about. Remember to actively ask yourself, what did this paragraph tell me? What have I learned? What do I need to remember? and then write all that next to the margin. By doing this, this will really help you get a solid understanding. And then just like the other chapters, you're going to do the practice questions in the back, look through which ones you've got wrong, and then put in the front of the chapter how many questions you got right and the date you took it. When you're one month away, you're going to want to start planning your studying if you haven't already. So you're going to draw a calendar and you're going to think what chapters have I still not learned yet and what chapters do I really need to review and when am I going to take my practice tests so I'm not waiting until the last minute but I'm doing it early enough that I have time to go back and review but also so I'll remember. So I recommend you take your first practice test about three weeks out from your actual test and this will give you a good idea of what you need to know. I recommend with this practice test to write down each of the chapters in your book and then when you're done taking the practice test, remember do it under timed conditions without a calculator. Tell your family and friends not to text you, not to call you, not to open your door or come into your room because you need to simulate this. You only have three practice tests. You can find more online, but barons are the only ones that you can actually trust because people have made their own practice tests but you really can't judge the credibility of those. So take the tests as if they were an actual test and then once you're done, go through the answer key. And the answer key, actually one thing with Barron's is they tell you which chapter it corresponds to. And then next to the chapters in your little table of contents that you've drawn, just do a tally and then draw an arrow and say the specific topic. For example, simple harmonic motion is kind of a broad topic. That could be waves, that could be light waves, sound waves, oscillating pendulums, oscillating springs. But for me, I didn't just want to do a tally next to simple harmonic motion because that would just take me forever to review that entire chapter. So what I did was I drew an arrow and my arrow says ratios of harmonic frequency. And this is something that I struggled with to remember the different fundamental frequencies. It was just something I struggled because I was never taught it. Um, 
we were taught um, pendulums, but nothing like fundamental frequencies, first, second, third harmonics, open and closed tubes and stuff like that. And then when you go through each chapter in your study plan, look back to the front page of your book where you've written all of the subtopics that you need to learn within each chapter and have a specific focus on that. If you still feel like you're having trouble, then go on Khan Academy, watch the videos again if you feel like you need to, do practice questions if you feel like you need to. You can go online and just type in fundamental frequency questions, magnetism, adding vector questions, stuff like that. Finally, about one week out from the test, you want to go back and at the front page of each chapter, hopefully you will have done all the chapters, you can see how many you've gotten wrong. And so you need to prioritize your time. You can't spend hours and hours every single day. You're going to get burned out. So you need to maybe dedicate one or two hours a day or as much as you need to feel like you were successful. If you spend two hours and you say, I don't feel successful, keep studying until you feel like you accomplished something that day. But if you get something done in half an hour and you say, I really feel accomplished, then you're good to go. You have the rest of the day. So don't be afraid to study the chapters you got wrong. If you have to read the same chapter over two, three, four, five, ten 10 times, I know I did, but I want to tell you just by embarking on this journey, <laughs> you have shown that you are one of the smartest and the brightest. So congratulations to you because that's awesome. And I'd give you a gold star, but hopefully the 800 that you're gonna get is going to compensate. Just some general tips for you guys. One, don't get discouraged if you don't get every single question right, or even every single question minus one right. On the physics test, there are 75 multiple choice questions, and most times that they administer the test, you don't need to get more than 57 correct to get an 800. I don't know how many I got correct because they don't tell you how many you get correct. I just know that I got an 800, woo -hoo, but I could have gotten 57 correct, I could have gotten 75 correct, I could have gotten any number in between those. Step two is learn one or two formulas per chapter. You do not need to learn all of them and your brain's going to explode because you're not given a formula sheet and so you need to have those formulas in your head. What you want to do is you want to think of units. Units are super, super important. If you have a Newton, for example, and you think Newton is a unit for force, and how do you get force? I'm just thinking force equals mass times acceleration. Mass is kilograms, acceleration is meters per second squared. That means one Newton is one kilogram times one meter per second squared. And that's really important. I know most of you probably know what a Newton is, but when you get into more complex units, especially with electricity, it becomes really helpful to resolve your units into support components and then into fundamental units, and that can really help you. In addition, if you don't know, my calculus teacher always tells us this, if you don't know a formula, you can derive it. That's right, you have the formulas right there in your head and they're just hiding and you have to discover them. Say you're trying to find out how to calculate an electric field from a point charge and you're thinking that's weird. Doesn't Coulomb's law say that you need to know both charges? Or that's weird. I have a formula for electric fields that relates force and charge, but I don't know the force, so how can I find the field? Well, you can derive it. You can actually substitute through a series of substitutions and canceling out. You can get that an electric field is equivalent to the electrostatic constant times the times the charge of a larger object over the distance between them squared. So you actually don't need to know the charge of your second object. So that's just a little example of how you can derive your formulas. This becomes really helpful. <laughs> and my last tip for you guys is if you find yourself doing complex math, Remember that you aren't allowed a calculator and the test makers did not design the test with the intention to make you do multiplication. That's a skill you learn in fourth grade and they figure you can use a calculator to learn that. So if you find yourself doing complex math, you will probably messed up somewhere. So I recommend to go back in the problem, maybe start over or check your math, figure out where you went wrong. The most complex thing that you'll get will be like a square root or a radical, but they won't make you resolve that into decimals. They will just say the square root of two. They won't make you do that. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I wish the best of luck and comment down below maybe some other studying strategies that you may have. And if you take this test and this video helps you, let me know how you scored or how you think it went. Thank you so much for watching guys. I will be going back to bracelets. Some of you guys on my Instagram were a little concerned that I'm going to be switching to studying, but that's not the case. I thought I had some studying tips to share with the world, but I will be going back to bracelets. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe, because why not? We do awesome stuff. I post plenty of videos of my cat and also cool vlog stuff. And also I'll teach you how to make bracelets for when you're studying for physics, but you're so tired that you just got to plop down and make some bracelets, because that's awesome. Okay. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Bye.